All right. Happy Monday to everybody. We are here with Thomas Gonvaldison from Arendal Sound. You know, we were supposed to do this live stream a couple of weeks ago, but there's been a lot going on and I apologize for the rescheduling. But we're here now and we're here to talk about your 1723 subwoofers, some of which we've reviewed and we've given you guys great reviews of. We also have a winner that we're going to announce at the end of the live stream for the 1961 tower. So definitely stay with us this whole session. We got Thomas here, who's basically you're the chief designer for the company. Am I correct? Basically, yeah. So uh, great to be back, Gene. Uh, always a pleasure being here with you. Absolutely, man. I enjoy these conversations. And what we want to do today is just kind of dig into your subwoofers. I know we've done reviews and, and we've done a couple of live streams with, with James Larson. And he's really a fan of your products. You know, he always gushes over the quality of your products. And he's not one to do that because he's a very pragmatic guy. So that means a lot. But I like to get into the nitty gritty and the designs of things. Um, we have some questions here, I think that we you can answer and then we can uh, get questions afterwards from the sure. audience. Yeah, so I'm gonna put up the first question here. I'll pin it here, that way everybody could see it. And then you could kind of just do your thing. So here's the first question we're gonna go over. Briefly go over the subwoofers in the range. So you have ported and sealed subwoofers. I think you've got two or three different models for each. Why don't we just go over that? Sure, yeah, we have two two sealed and, and two vented subwoofers. Uh, so we have uh, one S and then the number stands for the amount of drivers in, in the subwoofer. So that's a single driver a sealed uh, cabinet, S is for sealed. And then we have uh, two S, which is two drivers, dual, dual driver uh, sealed cabinet. Um, and then we have one V, so that's a one driver vented uh, cabinet. And then we have two V, which is the big dual driver vented cabinets and uh, the, the single driver models have uh, 800 watts of power and then the dual drivers have uh, 1200 watts of, of power. So is it the same amplifier except you just get more power out of it because now you got two drivers in parallel? Uh, basically, yeah, it's, it's the same amplifier, um, but obviously you get more more output with the, the impedance of the, the dual drivers. Now, do you use the same amplifier for the sealed or ported and you just do a different DSP tune depending on yeah. the enclosure? Yeah. Definitely. It's, it's all in, in the DSP to, to get right. them to, to play properly. So now if you have a 1S or a 1V versus a 2S or a 2V, does the dual driver uh, ca the dual driver models give you, is it a much larger cabinet to accommodate the extra volume you need for two drivers in the same, you know? Well, in, for, for, for the, yeah, for the sealed, it's uh, not that uh, much larger. It, it is bigger, but uh, not by a huge margin. But the vented ones, they are significantly larger than the, the sealed counterpart is. So the uh, 1V is significantly larger than the 1S, and then the 2V also significantly larger than the, the 2S in physical uh, appearance. Right. Well, one thing I would tell you that I like about your subs is it's not the traditional giant box, right? It's more of a rectangle, so it's taller and a little bit more narrow. I like having a more narrow footprint because it allows you to integrate it into the room better. If you want to put it on a sidewall, if you want to put it behind a couch or something like that, it's a little easier to integrate when it's taller and not as deep. For sure. Um I mean, it's, there's, there's only so many things you can do with the square box that has uh, one or two drivers in it, right? But uh, at least we're trying to make it look uh, as aesthetically pleasing as we can, and then obviously adhering to, uh, to acoustic principles to get it sounding the, the proper way. Right. All right. So here we're going to go with the next question. What would you say these subwoofers are made for? I know there's a lot of discussions where people would say, I'm going to choose this subwoofer because it's better for music. I'm going to choose that subwoofer because it's better for movies. Maybe go over that. Is that is that kind of a myth, or is there some truth to it? And is there a way to have a subwoofer that's ideal for both? Uh, I I would say our subwoofers are for for the people that are maybe somewhat quality conscious uh, that want kind of a uh, uh, a great subwoofer in in uh, in a package that kind of does it all. Um, maybe not for the guys that are just looking at specs like uh, 
how deep can it go or, or how much output specifically or how many watts of power does the, the amplifier have, but kind of a, a combined package where all of the elements are, are taken into account and then also the, the aesthetics and then the build quality of, of the, uh, the subwoofers and, and kind of the appearance and, and feel of it all um, as, a, as a full unit. Well, one thing I noticed and looking at the measurements of the subs, uh, James Larson reviewed for you guys is an important aspect of a quality of how a subwoofer sounds musically is, is its group delay response. And your subs do a really good job, even the ported ones. Sometimes you get a ported sub or you get a sub that has a really aggressive high pass filter and you get a really large group delay at the lower frequencies and that can make the sub sound sluggish. And that's never been a problem with any of the subs we reviewed for you. So I would argue that, yeah, your subs might not be the output monsters that you that some of your competitors have at the same price, but they're a jack of all trades. They do music and home theater equally well. And that's, to me, the most important. I'm more focused on the quality of sound for music. And your subs are incredibly focused and tight. They don't misbehave. So you could get some subwoofers that don't have good limiters in them. They can bottom out or they can make mechanical noise or the port chuffing. And that's just not been our experience. And when we reviewed them both on the bench, when we do the CEA 2010 measurements, and then most importantly, when you're listening to movies or music, these subwoofers are really bulletproof and they're clean. Yeah, exactly. The, the sound quality is uh, one of the main things for, for us. Uh, and combining that with the, uh, a lot of power output and an, an extension that's kind of what what's uh, in, my, in my opinion you know where it starts getting really difficult and uh, on the design uh, spectrum so it's fairly easy to to design a server for that only does one of the things well and with uh, less regard of, of uh, the other aspects so if you want a server for just to play loud or or one that just goes deep or one that just sounds great but then kind of with complete disregard of the other aspects that's uh, well uh, much easier task in in that sense so i'm going to ask you a, a question about a future product here that just popped up will arendelle come out with anything bigger for these for those of us who want extreme bass now let me just emphasize the 2v <laughs> is not a small sub <laughs> how much bigger do you want in a residential <laughs> house but it, has, is, it has the potential to break your back for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that thing weighs, what does it weigh, about 120, 130 pounds? I mean, it's not light. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking kilos. I, uh, I I have to Google the conversion, but uh, it's it's 60-something uh, uh, kilos. But I guess 120, 130 pounds. Yeah, it's well over 100 pounds. So to just to keep things into perspective. But, you know, so that your subwoofer is the, the uh, 1723s, a 13.8-inch driver. like Yes. Some, so, okay. So, so it's dual 13.8 inch drivers in, in uh, a fairly large. Uh, so I'm cabinet. thinking someone's probably thinking when are you going to come out with like a 16 inch uh, driver or an 18 inch? <laughs> you know, um, we have a, a lot of ideas and, uh, and thoughts that we go over and we have things on the drawing table, uh, so to speak. But uh, I, I can't say that we have... Uh, at this point in time, any uh, near future uh, launch that I I can foresee of, of uh, even larger subwoofers, but uh, who knows what will happen in one, two, three years from now. So I would say if you're if you're itching for a bigger subwoofer, get two subwoofers. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the best bet. I mean, you can even stack them in the corner, and then we'll. Just take that same amount of floor space. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, so here's the next question we're going to throw up here. There are a lot of settings on these subwoofers. What are some of the key features in your opinion? And I guess we're talking about the app control um, that you can access all the various settings. Why don't you kind of give a rundown of that? Uh, yeah, that, there are a bunch of settings. And they're the same uh, whether you go on the amplifier screen itself or if you're using the app for 1723 subs. Um, the only difference uh, is that in the app, you can actually set up groups of subs. So if you have multiple subs, you can, for example, set up a group of subs in the front and then rear and then whatever, or select all the subs you have in the room to, to adjust them at the same time. 
So um, when you say you group them, that means if I have two Arundel subs, 1723s, if I group them together, whatever I do with PEQ in the app is going to affect both subs simultaneously, right? Yes. Yes. That's good. So it, it will not uh, overwrite if you have different existing um, parameters set on them. But when you make set them in the same group and then whatever adjustments you do after the fact, they will affect both of them. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we, we have set these subs up uh, and built the DSP in a way that uh, you don't really need a separate DSP to be able to set them up in your room uh, proficiently. So you have a uh, full control of crossover frequencies. Uh, you have seven bands of uh, PEQ settings that you can mm -hmm. set on on the subs with very incremental Q settings um, on whatever uh, frequency and uh, gain from oh. minus 10 to up to plus three dBs. How low can you go with the PEQ? Like, what's the lowest frequency you could correct? I I cannot remember on the top of my head. I believe at least it's 20 hertz. 20 hertz. Okay. Uh, I believe it's 20 hertz. That's the lower, and then up to 160 or so. I could right. be wrong. Okay. Um, Do you have a uh, delay setting in case you want to offset the delay from one sub yes. to the other? Yes. So uh, then again, if you have multiple subs, um, and for example, just one output from your AVR, and they have different distance, then you can uh, delay the one that's closer to you so that they have the same uh, phase and in the same time domain. Yep. And then, you know, from the one output on the AVR, you, uh, you adjust the timing as it's one, one unit. Uh, See, that's really, that's incredible because there are lots of cases where if you buy an AVR that's under two grand, they only have one subwoofer output or sometimes they have yeah. two sub outs, but they're in parallel. So you don't have independent delay in, in uh, level. So exactly. the fact that you could, the fact that you could do that with these subs, you don't need to get a mini DSP in the loop because the mini DSP as good as it is, it also has its own delay that people may not always account for. So the fact that you have this ability, now you set one delay on your processor or your receiver and then delay the subs that you need to, to get everything to phase align. I mean, it's really important if you're serious about bass to invest in a measurement microphone and learn how to use REW. Definitely, definitely. So you can have how many ever subs you want and kind of uh, adjust them as uh, one unit, at least uh, from, the, from a timing uh, perspective of it. Um, mm -hmm. I would also uh, mention that we have some pre-set uh, EQ filters uh, for, for the subs. Uh, we have three settings for, for the seal subs, and then we have six settings for, for the vented subs because they also have a uh, foam plug, so you can plug the port and then you can set them up as, uh, as a seal subwoofer uh, in terms of how, how the EQ and, and output is. Um, so then it would be EQ1 is the, the setting with the most output, and then you have half an octave above that is EQ2, and then a full octave above that is CQ3. That's the, where the roll-off starts on, on the subs. So I'm going to be honest with you. I never understood the logic of buying a giant vented sub and then sealing it. Why not just get the sealed sub if you're going to do that? Because now you're just taking up more floor space and you're, you neutering, you're neutering the subwoofer. It's going to be basically yeah. if you take a 2V and you seal it, it's probably not going to have massive amount more output than the 2S, right? It will have a couple of dB more than the 2S, but uh, from my perspective, it, it does make sense if you have, uh, let's say you don't really care about how, how large the, the actual subwoofer is, mm -hmm. but you just want the, the versatility of being able to use it as a vented sub with you know all the output that it offers. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can seal the sub and it will give you better transient response and it will have less decay in the room uh, for, for music purposes. I am um, for sure want to prefer a, a sealed subwoofer. Um, and even the 2V compared to the 2S uh, with the larger cabinet, you also get a lower total Q on the alignment. So that means you get the, uh, a slightly better transient response and it will sound just a little more um, uh, damped uh, in, in the base. I gotcha. So, so, so it's slightly tighter. 
So someone's asking, this is a good question. I don't know if you know the answer off the top of your head. How much uh, latency is there in the DSP with the PEQ included on the sub? Is it, is it eight milliseconds? That seems a yes. little bit high. Is it? No, is it, it, it is, it is uh, eight milliseconds. That's, that's correct. That's about three meters right. um, of, of uh, latency on the, on the AM side. Is that because the PEQ is engaged? Is it less if the PEQ is not engaged? No, it will be the the same. Uh, this is just the the filters that has to go through and the built-in uh, DSP settings that are there that makes up for for the delay. So keep that in mind, guys. If you're setting up a system, um, most subwoofers that have digital DSP uh, in their amplifiers are going to have some latency. And if you're going to set up and your sub is ten feet away, you may not necessarily use the ten foot physical distance because you have some delay electrically. So if you're using a room correction system and it comes up with a different delay, I would say go with that delay and measure it and make sure that you get good integration. Just don't go with the tape measure uh, physical distance of your subwoofer because it's usually not the correct one. So that's something important when you're setting up and calibrating your subwoofer. Oh, definitely. I remember from my early years that, you know, you're, you're doing in a, an auto calibration and you see the distance is, is different than what you're actually measuring and mm -hmm. you, you know you're inclined to go and, and adjust that but that won't be right yep here's another good question uh what's the benefit of using the balanced xlr connection versus the rca connection uh, if you want to talk about that a little bit uh, well, the, the signal will be less prone to any noise, basically, uh, before it uh, it uh, arrives the subwoofer. But from uh, the subwoofer's perspective, there's no advantage using XLR, uh, really. It's it's the same. There's so much uh, level matching capabilities within the sub itself that it doesn't really matter from from that perspective. I guess you know eliminating the possibility of hum is 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 the biggest benefit well well, well that's uh, what i mean by any you know um, kind of uh, uh, disturbance on the signal bef yeah. before it arrives yeah. to uh, to the subwoofer yep i gotcha all right so here's another good question to ask here it's about sealed versus ported the difference between vented and sealed and best case uses um so let, let's start with seal then it's uh, they're a lot smaller so you can much more easily fit them in any room and, and situation um, and they are very popular in a typical living room setup uh, where you don't necessarily want a you know huge box they're giving up of a lot of uh, floor space yeah uh, and they're also really popular with uh, uh, two channel uh systems so if you you know you're not really concerned about having 100 db at 15 hertz then um and you're more kind of looking at the having the, the best sound quality to to match with the speakers that you have in in your two channel system i think a, a seal sub is a, a great choice um as for for vented well they're, they're huge in, in comparison really um, and they are much more fun and engaging when you're in a cinema room and you, you know, you, you have the full effects and really want to crank up the volume. Uh, that's where you get all the, the wow factor. If you want to impress your friends and, and whoever comes over and they have a big output advantage in, uh, especially in the deepest space, uh, over the, uh, the sealed counterparties. So, um, they can also be used for for two channel system though. Um, we did touch on it before and we, we have spent a lot of time and effort getting uh, uh, the best group delay we can, especially on these vented subs to, mm -hmm. to have them sound tight and dynamic also uh, when you're using them for music systems. So one question I have for you on your sealed subs, does it follow a second order roll off for the very low frequencies or do you put an additional yes. high? Yes, down to 10 Hertz. See, there's an but, advantage. There's an advantage when you have there. There are sealed subwoofers that I've measured that actually have fourth order roll off because they're really trying to protect that driver. That mm -hmm. negates the advantage of a sealed subwoofer because a sealed subwoofer that has meaningful output at low frequencies will give you more room coupling because there's less of an aggressive uh, roll off below the venting frequency of a vented sub when you have a sealed sub. 
So you could actually get single digit base extension if the sub is putting out enough output and the room isn't too large. You know, I mean, that's yeah. there are some advantages to having sealed subwoofers. If you want that ultra low frequency, it just may not play quite as loud at those frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say the, the largest caveat with the sealed sub is that you, you just can't play as loud, at least down to wherever the tuning frequency on the vented counterpart is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was an interesting comment here and I don't know where it is now. <laughs> it was about uh, the delay. Yeah, this one, this is an interesting one. I just want to throw this up here. And it, I actually, I haven't even considered this before because I know if you can't put a physical wire at a subwoofer and you could go with a wireless transmitter, that adds its own delay. So if you have that and there's a lot of group delay in a wireless transmitter and you got the delay of the subwoofer's DSP, it could wig out the room correction system and not be able to compensate. This is a, a really excellent comment. And I guess um, if you're buying wireless transceivers, it's an important spec to look at. Do you guys, you know, that's another question I have for you. Do you guys have a wireless transmitter for your subs? No, we, we don't. Um, I'm a little uh, surprised actually to, to read that. That, that. that must mean it has like quite a bit of delay in the, the in wireless the transmitter. Uh, transmitter then. Or he's got mm -hmm. some weird room acoustic thing going on. Maybe maybe the RT60 decay of his room is so bad that it, it's it's messing up the room correction. I've actually seen room oh. correction systems when you have an RT60 decay in a small room of about 800 milliseconds or more, and they couldn't properly compensate. There was not there wasn't enough low frequency damping for it to to do meaningful <laughs> correction. But that is that is something that uh, I think is important to note. And, you know, this is an actual product idea for you guys. Why not come up with a good low latency wireless transmitter? Yep, that's uh, it is, you know, easier with, without, without the cables. Um, I do feel safe for having a cable because sometimes there can be, you know, whatever, some slight yeah. glitches on, on a wireless system. But the uh, technology has gotten further than it had you know some some years back so there there are some there are some viable options to to look into for sure you know i'm still old-fashioned too i've got a one gigabit switch in my house and i've got wireless access points everywhere so i have a really stable wireless connection but on all my audio gear i still use ethernet <laughs> i just don't uh... why not right if you <laughs> yeah. have access to it plug everything in wired the same thing with subwoofers if you can run if you're if you're new construction and you could drop a couple of RG6s around the room for future subwoofers. I highly recommend doing a wired version, but if you absolutely have to go wireless, then take a look at the spec and see what the delay is on those. I know Snap AV makes a pretty good one from uh, what Don Dunn from Haven Smart was telling me. He's used those in installs and hasn't had issues with them, but I don't know if they're all created equal. No, I, I don't know either. Yeah. All right, so here is the next one. What is your favorite subwoofer in the range? <laughs> You're gonna say the two V. I know it. <laughs> I'm I'm a sucker for seal subs, and and I prefer the sound of seal subs. Oh, okay. But but the two V is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I figured so, that. So so, no, the thing is, the the two V is uh, is just uh, a really really fun and engaging subwoofer. It you know it can play really loud when you want it to, and it definitely has that wow factor. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but it, it really has that kick and, and tautness, even though it's it's a, it's a vented sub. Uh, you, you can, of course, uh, plug the, uh, the vent and then, you know, it tightens up it, even more. Yeah. Um, but I think just just for the, the sheer kind of the, the impressive behavior of it, and it, it could be more of a furniture than, than anything else. Uh, you know, it's significantly large, um, I, I would say. Um, and well, I don't know if I should say this, but uh, I hope my wife's not watching. Um, <laughs> we, we had, uh, or, or I, I had this, this, the, or all the 1723 subs at, at home when we were doing development. And, and the 2V, I remember I had set it up uh, in my living room. You know, it's, uh, there's no acoustic absorption or anything in there, just a, just a standard living room. And I thought I'd, I'd have some fun with my wife, you know. So, so I cranked up the, uh, the master volume to plus 20, which is the max, and the input gain to max. Then, so it didn't have to kind of uh, 
uh, kill my speakers during the, the, the test scene. And I asked her to sit down, you know, and I cranked up. I, I found a, a track that was pretty impressive uh, with, with this subwoofer. And I expected some sort of reaction, you know, like, wow, this is awesome. And, but she just started crying uh, straight <laughs> out. <laughs> it was just too much. <laughs> so, so I had a bruised shoulder after, but, uh, but uh, it was all <laughs> fun after. Oh, after man. <laughs> That's, that's, that's sadistic, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that's this much from, from my experience with, with my wife. Um, I use her to determine if I have the bass tune right in my room. She's extremely sensitive to bass. I think a lot of women just don't like boomy bass, and they're not like us. We like a lot of bass. I don't like boomy bass, but I do like an elevated bass level. Mm -hmm. But when I sit my wife down in my theater room, I say, listen to this. I just recalibrated. Tell me what your thoughts are. If she's happy and she's not complaining that things are boomy, then I know that I have a good calibration. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. They, they say ladies have better hearing than us. So uh, they absolutely sure do. There's yeah. something to it. Yeah, they definitely have better high frequency hearing. My wife could still hear like dog whistles in that, you know, the 20, <laughs> 18 kilohertz range. I can't hear 18 kilohertz anymore, unfortunately. Uh -oh. But uh, here we got a super chat from Oliver. Hey, Oliver. Uh, any tips for constructing back boxes for stud walls for in wall subwoofers that don't come with proprietary back boxes? Now, you guys don't do in wall subwoofers. That's a hint that you need to be doing. <laughs> this person could have bought your subwoofer if you had an in wall subwoofer. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Good question. Um, depends how, how, how tall and how much uh, volume you need in there. Yeah. Um, if the kind of the, the, the surface area of the box uh, is uh, relatively tall and I, I would definitely recommend having in some uh, some some braces in there to, to avoid having flex in the box because that will definitely detract from from the sound quality and you know you'll you, you'll hear uh, resonance from the box as much as, as you know the sub output you want and that's not something you want. I would also say that you really need to gasket that enclosure and decouple it from the studs. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of vibration on the drywall. Yes. I think a lot of uh, there's a, there's a deficiency in quality in wall subwoofers. OK, so I've been researching this ever since I built the AudioHawk Smart Home. And there's a few really good in wall subwoofers, one of them being JL Audio, not cheap, very expensive, but they completely decouple the uh, enclosure from the studs. It kind of floats. It floats in the in uh, between the studs. It's an ingenious system because it's a really clean base that you get out of it. And but it takes a big box. I mean, if you looked at these boxes that were a thirteen inch driver, the boxes are about four or five. I think they're five feet tall because you only have a four or six inch stud bay. You know, there's not a lot of depth in a, at least in American homes. I don't know what it's like internationally. I would oh, imagine yeah. it's even less because it's more block construction yeah right? yeah we, we, we don't have uh, too too much in uh, in over i think the standard is like 10 centimeters or, or so right yeah so i i like in ceiling subwoofers because you tend to have um much deeper cavity space in a ceiling and putting a subwoofer in a ceiling is equivalent to putting it on the floor so i, I think a lot of people miss that opportunity when they're doing in wall or in ceiling uh subwoofers use the ceiling as a floor I did that in my fam in my bedroom system. I have two in ceiling subwoofers in my bedroom system, and it rocks. And you know, all you see it looks like an air conditioned vent. But we're <laughs> we're we're getting off topic. I just think it. I think it's another. Hey, look, this live stream has produced two product ideas for you guys. <laughs> yeah, right on. So we have the last question here, and then um, we'll talk about the winner of the contest and, and all that stuff. But this is a good question. I kind of wish you had an illustration to go with this question, but people can look at pictures um, on our reviews and I'll link up our reviews here. Can you tell us a bit about the driver design? And my question to you is, is it the same driver for the sealed and the vented enclosure or is there a difference in those drivers? No, they are the same drivers, um, but there are differences on the drivers between the single and dual driver uh, versions. Just the impedance. Um, no. Um, okay. Let's let's start from the scratch. Uh, when we're designing, uh, frankly, any of our drivers, um, and and especially the subwoofer drivers, mm -hmm. we're we're more focusing on trying to uh, reduce the mass of the, the entire moving uh, assembly. Um, 
you do need you know a certain mass to 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 reach uh, the deep frequencies that we're after in, in the subwoofer design uh, but too much of it will resonate and, and tend to to linger and and sound a bit sluggish um, mm -hmm. and it's uh, not what we're after you know we, we want that dynamic really hard hitting bass um, so we've we started the whole design with a frankly it's a it's a tiny voice coil it's a two inch voice coil um oh wow which which is pretty unheard of when we're talking about uh, the 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 rated power that the, these uh, these drivers can actually handle yeah because the problem when, when when the voice coil is so small is actually it being able to handle enough uh, heat without Either the, the 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 coil itself burning up, or the insulation starts uh, uh, boiling, uh, or the glue itself, you know, starts boiling and then lets go of the the whole voice coil, and then you have this rubbing effect, and it just dies out. Uh, so what we've done to kind of uh, avoid these issues is we have uh, a lot of venting uh, in the motor structure. So we have in in the cone body itself, we have vents. And then we have vents in the, the actual bobbin uh, where the, the voice coil is uh, um, wrapped around. And then we have vents under the, uh, the spider itself. So, so for every stroke, it, it's you know, generating new fresh air into the, the, the motor structure. And then we've applied uh, a special type of glue and, and, and a special uh, insulating layer on the, the wire itself that will um, handle enough heat. And we have used aluminum wire instead of uh, typical um, copper wire. Yeah, uh, it's it's a lot lighter and it dissipates heat a lot better than than copper. So, um, but it also has higher resistance than copper too. Yeah, copper copper does flow uh, uh, electrons better, but not as much better as the weight is less on the aluminum and the heat dissipation also you, you can't get with the copper basically mm -hmm. uh, at the same level. So um, all into account, you, you, you get, uh, you know, you just need a larger diameter aluminum wire to have the same yeah. uh, electricity being able to flow through, but then still you have like a 40% lighter wire Yeah. Uh, in the end. So it's, it's pretty, pretty significant actually. I'm going to throw up an excerpt from our review on the driver that people can read here. And again, this will be linked up. Um, this will be linked up. Oh, wait, it's not coming out. There it is. The cones are made from a combination of long fiber pulp and fiberglass and are attached to the baskets with nitrile butyl rubber surround and conic spider. The voice coil, like you said, has a two inch diameter and uses aluminum wire and a polymid foamer, former. The basket yep. is a thick stamp steel with that connects to a beefy motor compromise of one and a half inch stacked of two magnets that are six inches in diameter. There's a heavy bumped out back plate for long excursions, which reduce risk of hard bottoming and venting. It's basically impossible to, uh, to uh, bottom out this driver. Um, yep. Uh, the way it's designed uh, it's uh, the, the the magnet piece is so deep that you know the uh surround will will just physically stop it and you, you have to physically uh, break the cone for it to be able to to reach down there yeah i got you and i wanted to show see if, if i could share this window here it's not letting me i wanted to give an excerpt here of this oh i hate when things don't work the way they're planned but <laughs> I was going to show the group delay measurements that we were, we were talking about. Oh, yeah. All right, there it goes. I don't know why it wasn't letting me do that. Do you see the graphs here? Yes, I do. So, again, we're talking about this is the 1723 uh, 1V. So this is the single driver one. And then this is the 1723 sealed subwoofer. And you can see the, uh, the group delay on the vented one is really good. You typically, below tuning, you would see that this purple trace would go above the one cycle. It'd be closer to the cycle and a half on a lot of subs. So you guys really put a great effort. You tune this thing really low. So it doesn't matter when you get below 20 Hertz, it doesn't matter if the group delay is high because it's such a low frequency. Anyway, it's imperceivable. So that's the fact that you're under a cycle at 20 Hertz on a vented sub is really good. It just gives confidence that you could use a seal uh, vented sub as for music. But of course, 
you know, the sealed sub is even lower. So it is. It is. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we, we have put a lot of emphasis on, on the vented ones to, to really make them sound uh, articulate and, and, and snappy. Yep. And then this is another good point. You got a 10 year warranty on your products and a five. Is it five years on the plate amp? Yes, it's five years on, on, on the plate amps. And that's unusual. Most, most subwoofer companies give you a year on a plate amp. And I've said this in many uh, videos before the plate amp is the least reliable component in any home theater. So the fact that you guys are given a five year means that you probably be put a lot of effort into making a reliable play amp on your subs because you don't want you don't want returns. <laughs> no, no, and, and luckily the, the the failure rating on this is uh, exceptionally low. So um, it's it's a uh, really a design that's that's um, uh, call it over engineered in a way to to really uh, withstand. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of beating uh, and, and a lot of playing really loud over years and years mm -hmm. so here's a good question for you another product idea can you do white grills for the white finish please oh uh, yes we can um and we have uh done uh, quite quite some effort on on uh, finding fabrics that that will work the problem is um we have a certain standard of how it's uh, how it has to look, uh, you know, to be aesthetically pleasing. And the problem with white is that um, the mesh needs to be so uh, tightly wound that it affects sound quality. Um, and the only even, way even at bass frequencies? Uh, no, no, not at, not 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 at bass frequencies. Oh, obviously. okay. Um, but but. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, yeah. uh, speaker. Yeah. yeah, we could do it on 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 the subwoofers, but then kind of it it looks a little out of balance with the, the speakers in a sense. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of where the problem is that uh, you know it it will suck out literally several dBs of output uh, over the black grills that have a, a, a much more open mesh. Uh, yeah, we could use it. the same same type of mesh on the white one, but then you see all the blackness on, in, you know, behind you know, all Goes the black right wires. And, and yeah. So, I so say, it's like, if uh, it's the speakers and you don't have small kids, lay, you know, around the house, leave the grills off on the speakers. But uh, putting a white grill on the sub does make sense because people don't always want to see a big driver, you know, on a box sitting on the floor. So, yeah, fair enough. We got another product idea when will rndl come out with in-wall speakers come on come on you're missing the mark here <laughs> well this is uh, this is again something that we've uh, also discussed uh, in, in deep detail uh, or quite a few product meetings i, I will admit um but we'll see uh maybe maybe Maybe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So we're going to announce the winner for the 1961 Towers now. I have a screenshot here. And it is Philippi. Oh, I'm going to butcher this name. Gone Calves. Gone Calves. But he's in Portugal. So congratulations, uh, Felipe. And um, I'm sure you guys are going to reach out to him and, and work out the shipping arrangements for that. Definitely. And then you guys wanted to do like some consolation prizes, right? You wanted to do like gift box winners. How many did you want to choose based on the questions that we have here? And we'll try, we'll try to pick the questions. Uh, we have uh, two, two gift box winners. Okay. Or two gift boxes to give out. All right. So I'm going to kind of sift through this. I think one of them was... There was the guy that asked when you're going to come out with a bigger subwoofer. I always love those kind of questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, damn, I can't find this. There's so many chats here. It's hard to kind of keep track of this. Yeah, there are quite a few. Yeah, if you see it, let me know the name, and then we can uh, we can put that in there. That's the, that's one of the ones. And did you have another question that you liked that you wanted to pick? Um, what about the, the guy asking about the white grills? Okay. All right. So there you have it. Um, 
I guess if you guys are still on the live stream, the white grill guy and the guy that wants the bigger subwoofer, just put it in the chat here and then put your email address in the chat here. And then we will, uh, R and L will reach out to you guys for that. Do, 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 uh, do reach out directly, uh, uh, to, to sales at R and L sound. Yeah. Um, but if you can post your, your email on chat here also, then we can verify you're the, the white sender. People are asking about some swag here. When are you going to get some Arundel sweatshirts, hats, or just the logo on it? You see, there's the, all these product ideas. <laughs> but this is not my table. This is this is more the the, the marketing department. I'm, I'm I'm more into the techie details, and uh, I can do the invoice and and uh, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, know it. um, I, I know people are people are, are wanting some some t-shirts and some some swag. Um, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. All right. Well, I can't find those questions. Unfortunately, I probably should have left them up, pinned them up for that. But let's let's do the honor system. So be honest if you're the ones that ask those questions, and then reach out to Arundel Sound, and and I think. We could always go back and look at the chats afterwards and just verify it's the right person. Sure, we can. All right. Well, Thomas, I appreciate it. Um, I think the next time you get on a live stream, we need to talk about future products because people keep asking me about that. So that should be the theme of the next live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Active speakers. I don't know. Something, something cool yeah. like that. A bigger tower. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Uh, check out the reviews that we've done on the various Arundel subwoofers. I'll link them up in the description below. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.